Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. We are ready for another round three match here at the Liverpool Regional Championships. I am Luke Adrosh Kromi, joined by Costa Dynamos. It's amazing to have you back on the casting desk. It's always always a laugh working with you, and <laughs> we definitely need it at this point of the competition. We're yeah. approaching that heavy halfway mark. Our players are tired. It's a long day ahead of us. That's why they're refueling on the lunch break, and we've got some competitive action for you guys at home. And we do. What sort of competitive match do we have coming up, Lou? Yes, we <laughs> have a very fiery one. We are going to be having Marco Shimanta Caldura Silva versus Miguel Marti de la Torre. And um, yeah, it's a really, really strong matchup. I'm really glad you pronounced the names because we <laughs> all know as history, I'm, I'm not the best at it. So apologies to these players once again, I will always do my best. And it's definitely gonna be an exciting match. However, yes. on Marco's side of the field, there are some really interesting Pokemon choices. We've got Meowskarada, Tatsugiri, mm -hmm. Golden Go, Dondozo, Baxcalibur, and Volcarona. And we're just gonna focus on his team a little bit first of yep. all, and then we'll switch over to Miguel's team. But one Pokemon I really wanna talk about is that Baxcalibur. I mean, there's a lot to talk about Baxcalibur. It's got an outrageous base attack stat, mm -hmm. I believe of 145, and um, it having Thermal Exchange is a really cool ability that we have seen. Yes. It's the first of its kind in all of Pokemon, in all of the generations, so uh, being able to sort of force the play where any sort of fire type moves going into that slot mm -hmm. does actually proc that plus one in its attack stat, right? And it is immune to burns. That is mm -hmm. so, so crucial for a physically attacking Pokemon. Exactly. The fact that you can't get burned already, you know, it's such a nice thing that we've seen on a lot of the new Pokemon coming in, you yep. know, even uh, Garganarkle having its Purifying Salt ability means it can't have that status yes. affliction upon it. And it's in a similar way, just a little bit more linear, you know, only a burn, mm. you can still be paralyzed, you can still be put to sleep. But I think, like you've mentioned, the fact that it is this physical attacking Pokemon, yep. not only can it not be burned, but getting that contact and being able to boost up Yep. one attack yep. makes it really formidable on the field and it's certainly an interesting pokemon choice having the dragon and ice typing yes can be difficult sometimes but then hey we're in a terror format you can change mm -hmm. your typing if you don't like it exactly <laughs> <laughs> i mean just change it up i think we've <laughs> definitely seen electric type baxcalibur as well as water mm -hmm. you know those sort of um types are chosen uh, because you can actually resist the make it rain from uh, golden go so mm -hmm. uh, being able to sort of release uh, resist that situation and put on the pressure even with let's say for example loaded dice which is a very yes. viable item for it um you're able to for example allow your ice ball spears to always pretty much guarantee four hits at least mm -hmm. out of five which is already substantially strong you're able to uh double and kind of guarantee that increased base power whilst getting rid of any sort of focus sashes in the process like an mm -hmm. amoongus Exactly, and Amoongus being so disruptive. It's definitely a Pokemon yeah. you just want to get off the field as <laughs> soon as possible. I mean, Baxcalibur was on the winning team from San Diego Regionals and Chiseok Lee's team. And, you know, I see why a lot of players are then picking up in popularity. Yeah. It, it's a really interesting Pokemon to come out, and I, I hope it does come to this match. Oh, well, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> on the opposing side, however, for Miguel, as promised, we'll give a quick rundown of the team. It looks a little familiar. Mm. There is a Palafin, Salamence, King Gambit, Amoongus, Pormot, and Pelipper. And I believe we saw these exact same six on Yuel's team from our previous round three game now unfortunately this team of six were not victorious against Lee at Provo so Palafin is on the redemption arc right now mm. for Miguel I mean Palafin just one of those Pokemon which as well once it enters that hero form mm -hmm. um, it's just outrageously powerful you're just able to go ahead and <laughs> put a lot of pressure with jet punch it being a priority move and of course being its signature move for Palafin is really really strong if for example um, there is no sort of psych terrain or any sort of mm -hmm. abilities that block priority it is such a valuable uh, sort of priority move because mm -hmm. in that scenario you just want to go ahead and deal as much damage as you can there's multiple multipliers available for it as well let's say with mystic water if you've got rain available and as well as even the water type terror mm -hmm. which just adds so <laughs> much more it just damage. goes up and up and up it you just know, does. It Palafin just can't does. just do one thing to its attack stack. It's got to do a whole plethora of things. You know, having that choice band, like you mentioned, in the rain. It's already water, so it has that same type attack bonus. And then let's combine it with the terror type to get even more damage on those water type moves. Does just show how destructive Palafin can be. Exactly. And that's why it makes such a good partner with a Pokemon like Pelipper. Um, I think one thing that's really interesting to note as well taking a look through this team is again the Pokemon choices that are supporting Pokemon like that Salamence. Now okay. taking a look at Miguel's team it is run very similarly to the way that y'all just ran it in the previous game. You know yep. Palafin again running that choice band we've got the Salamence mm -hmm. as a really interesting choice uh, running that Steel Terra type with Draco Media, Hurricane, Focus, Energy and Protect. Very similar to the way that we have seen Hydreigon being mm. run previously. So I wouldn't be surprised if these two have potentially maybe you know coordinated teams before or have taken it from the same playbook here. Yeah and I think something to make note of as well 
Mm. Not something that you typically actually see Salabens running, but there is a bit of a scope lens action <laughs> that may be coming out from it. Focus energy as well. Accuracy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think just being able to go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. Critical <laughs> hit, not accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that was a critical hit, but yeah, so I, I think given the situation, it's sort of trying to uh, emulate a bit of mm -hmm. a high dragon sort of scenario where we did see those uh, focus energy scope mm -hmm. lens um, sets being ran and sort of like building up in popularity and actually seeing it being utilized on a mm -hmm. Salamence here, which it does have that support of intimidate, which is really, yes. really crucial. Exactly, and if we take a look at our players here as well, look at the accolades. Both of these players are so accomplished. Miguel has been the European international champion at the very first European internationals when they were launched in 2017 series, and again has loads of years of experience. Back in 2012 was Italy nationals runner-up, then in 2014 UK nationals runner-up, and has top eight worlds in 2014 as well. On Marco's side of the field as well, now I remember Marco back in senior division. Yeah. I, I believe it was the Stuttgart regional championships in 2000. And 18, 18 I want to say yeah. that Marco actually won in the senior division and oh my goodness has he continued to rise throughout the masters division being a formidable team builder amongst many things as well and also you know generous in the regard that one thing I always see from Marco is sharing those teams being creative and sharing them for other people to to utilize as well to get more people into the game yeah exactly and I think Marco is one of those players that has been there throughout, uh, even mm. with the online sort of grassroots circuits that we've seen that have become very popular in the past couple of years. He's always been on top. He's always been trying to master his art and being able to just see him once again, currently 2-0, does not surprise me. Exactly, and let's take a deeper dive in on Miguel's team here. Once again, that King Gambit with the Assault Vest making it so difficult to deal with with your special attackers if you're the opponent, which is why, again, in the previous game, Lee utilized that Annihilate, the physical attacker, mm. to deal with it so well before it was able to sit on the field and be too destructive. Again, nice combination with Pokemon like the Palafin and the Pelipper here. Mm. Just having that rain synergy boosting up Palafin's capabilities, and that's something that Marco is going to have to watch out for. On Marco's side of the field, you know, you do have Pokemon like Dondozo that's going to be able to take those water type attacks really well yep. um, Pokemon again like Excalibur is not going to worry about taking them too too much and Miascarada is again a Pokemon that's going to be formidable for these water types on Miguel's side so in terms of the type matchup there are a lot of variables here and I think the leads are going to be critical to determining the outcome of these games yeah most definitely and I think being able to have um being able to for example have that golden go having mm -hmm. the choice specs over on Marco's side does mean that you're able to deal high amount of burst damage on the go. So I, th I think what um, Miguel's just going to have to be cautious is about is sort of trying to position his own board state to a better situation mm -hmm. and make sure that he's going to be able to nullify that golden go or at least make sure that it does not get that sort of immediate pressure and damage off. And the Volcarona, it's not one of the sets that we have seen, for example, with Quiver Dance, which is very, very popular. You know, maybe the Grass uh, type Terra, but in this case, we've just got Struggle Bud, which is a really mm. cool utility move, spread move, of course, and does actually drop the special attack on both of the Pokemon it does connect with. Yeah, and being able to play around with the stats of your Pokemon, not only boosting up yours on your side of the field, but also trying to reduce your opponents, has been a critical part of EDC since, you know, that type of thing's been introduced. But the key thing, particularly in this meta, where you come in and things are a little bit more hyper offense, you know, we haven't had Series 1 that long. Yes, there have already been trends and they've been shifts, and there's a lot of defensive plays you can make as well with the Terraforms. Yep. The fact that there are still a lot of extremely heavy hitters, a lot of Pokemon trying to, you know, bulk themselves up quite literally in the form of Annihilate, going for that beat-up strategy as well just does allow for these moves that drop stats as well to yep. still be relevant and still be viable. And it's nice to see it come on the special attacker side when we're so used to a plethora of Intimidates. Yeah, exactly that. And I think it, it's just, it's such a volatile meta in the point where um, there's a lot to really uh, look out for and make sure that your team is in a good enough state that it can handle, let's say, all of the different s forms of speed control, mm -hmm. or of course, the, let's say, uh, combinations such as Dondozo, Tatsugiri, as well as Mouse Hold and Annihilate. As long as you've got a sort of matchup going into that and a plan in your head, you should be good. Well, the leads are out of the blocks here. It's going to be, oh, a disconnect. But <laughs> before that happened, there was Volcarona and Golden Go on one side of the field there. Um, on the opposing side, I only remember the King Gambit. I can't remember the partner. Can you? No, I cannot, oh, unfortunately. It, <laughs> it, just, uh, it just slipped my eye. Um, uh, but yes, I think, unfortunately, uh, there is a bit of a disconnection there. Mm. Um, we are going to try to go ahead and make sure that the trains are able to connect once more. But in the meantime, of course, uh, there we did see that um, I think 
King Gambit is mm -hmm. a really, really cool Pokemon. You're able to sort of put that pressure on with uh, having the Defiance ability, being able to have the Assault Vest as well, does mean that you're able to take mm -hmm. specially offensive uh, damage very, very nicely. And of course, let's not forget, you always have the option of going for that type of uh, Terra type. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's very true. And I want to talk a little bit more about the Volcarona that we saw actually come out for um, Marco there. Yeah. Having a little look at the list. And again, it's one of these things as a commentator, we're so used to a closed team format. Yes. Uh, it's closed team list that I still always feel like I'm doing something wrong by talking about <laughs> information that I know. And it, I know. it's an old habit to break. Um, but of course, we saw actually earlier both the players really analyzing and focusing on the team list that their opponent has. So taking a deeper dive on this Volcarona, it's running that Terra water type. And what a terror is something we've just seen recently with Lee and Annihilate. But again, it's been one that's been nice to bring in on Pokemon such as Volcarona that are predominantly maybe a fire type. Pokemon yep. that don't want to get hit by this water type moves, having that defensive capability in there. Um, it's running flame body still, so it can still deal out a couple of burns to some physical attackers that want to make contact with it. And that yep. can actually be a devastating situation where possibly you're going for a physical move down into that opposing Volcarona. Um, you make contact, you get burn, and it had water terrored as well. So it just wasn't going to be, you know, the trade off wasn't there if maybe you're not dealing as much damage. And the Rocky Helmet to boot as well, being really annoying to giving you that extra chip damage to take. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of similar to how a Moon Jess is set up. We know that Rocky Helmet is one mm. of the most popular items for it. So, uh, for example, we've had Pokemon such as like Mousehold going for the Population Bomb. You're able to sort of take about half the amount of damage that you normally would, but at the cost of the mouse hold, actually mm -hmm. self-KOing um, as a result of that Rocky Helmet. So being able to actually see it uh, applied to this Volcarona, which is, of course, notably faster, and being able to position itself where it can actually go on the offensive. It can go for the overheat. If it wants to try to switch in and switch out, it can do so to reset its stages back down to neutral. And it's just generally a really, really cool Pokemon. Like you mm. said, Flame Body just adds that tiny bit more of punishment sort of mm. value out of having that item. Exactly, and another Pokemon on Marco's team we haven't talked about yet, Costa, is the Golden Go. Now, Golden Go is a Pokemon that when it first came out, you know, you look at it and you think, well, what's this going to do? It's not very formidable. Yep. But being able to go for that Make It Rain has made it so destructive. But the key thing I want to talk about on Marco's side is he's running that Choice Specs variant. We mm. have seen a shift recently to a more nasty plot, um, bulkier version of mm -hmm. the Golden Go. And it's nice to see this Troy Specs coming in because if we take a look at the moveset, you've got Make It Rain, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, and Power Gem. That is a whole bunch of coverage. You also have the option of the spread move there with Make It Rain. But the key one I want to talk about is that Thunderbolt. Yep. Particularly when you're facing down against a team like Miguel's where you've got Palafin, you've got the um, Pelipper, you've also got the Salamence that if it hasn't you know, changed its Terra type into yep. Steel, isn't going to want to take Electric type moves either. So possibly having the Golden Go hiding in the back to come and clean up when a match is over can be excellent because not only do you have that Thunderbolt, but make it rain, particularly if you haven't used your Terra and you want to tear into that Steel form yep. and get the extra boost that you get, it's going to be devastating. Yeah, it really, really will be. And um, I, I guess going over to Miguel's side, having that Pormot is, uh, honestly, I am a very big fan of Pormot. Mm -hmm. it, it really, really does have a nice effect offensive typing, both electric as well as fighting. It's got fake out pressure. It's got a lot of different options going for it, but Ooh. we've got game one, Lou. Yeah, and that Golden Go is actually jumping out this time. We've got Golden Go and the Volcarona on um, Marco's side of the field and on Miguel's, it's gonna be the Salamence and the King Gambit. Yep, exactly. So actually going ahead and seeing this sort of position right now, um, we've got the Salamence, mm -hmm. it is there. It can actually try to set up and uh, potentially even essentially try to go for, let's say, a Drake of Meteors or even um, get some... Almost go for that go. focus energy, start boosting up its critical chance. Exactly, yes. And then on the other hand, you've got King Gambit. It is very well aware of that Volcarona being there. It is uh, being threatened at the moment. But of course, we did mention it does have the option of Terra typing. Mm -hmm. They don't, uh, trainers don't tend to Terra type straight away. Sort of, they don't want to give that uh, sort of card away, that strategy. Yes. And they want to try to preserve it as much as they can, mm -hmm. which is maybe what we're actually seeing from Miguel's side right now. Yeah, it's nice to see the switch out here as well. King Gambit running that Grass Terror wouldn't really have been able to give it any extra defensive capabilities in the face of that Volcarona and its fire type moves. But yep. Pelipper, on the other hand, can bring the rain and that will reduce fire type moves by 50%. So that will help King Gambit out when it comes back in later. Yep. Terror is going to happen though, you know, Miguel not afraid to click it very early on here. And it's actually going to go for the Steel Terror on Salamence. Again, a Pokemon that now will be taking super effective damage from those fire type moves, which is why Pelipper coming in and bringing the rain is so critical. Ooh. Hurricane coming out. It is not going to get the one hit KO, but certainly puts Volcarona in a very dangerous spot and will get the confusion on it as well. So certainly that trump card is not necessarily going to be working out for Marco. Volcarona is confused. It is 
Oh, it is going to oh, hit itself. Oh, no. Poor Volcarona. No. Yeah, that is quite tough. Not being able to get that move off. As we're definitely seeing the Thunderbolt from that Golden Go actually pick up the one-hit KO. Of course, times four weak to the electric typing. Pelipa does not stand a chance. Absolutely love that catch with the Thunderbolt there. King Gamba is going to come back in now, but, you know, it's Fallen Comrade there in the form of the Pelipper. Has done, I think, what it needs to do in terms of setting the weather up, mm -hmm. but really nice for Marco to get their KO very early on here in this game. Of course, Golden Gate locked into now the Thunderbolt here. Yep. So unless potentially Marco wants to switch it out so that you can reset that later on, because I don't think Thunderbolt is the most critical here against either of these opponents, um, then, you know, you can still go for it, trying to go down into something like the Salamence, but the Assault Vest on the King Gambit, for example, isn't going to allow it to deal too much damage. Volcarona goes for some damage here, but it's going to be able to go for a Protect. Not going to KO itself this turn. Thankfully, not. It is going to be able to protect itself just for this turn, as we're going to be seeing the Salamence just completely ignore it. Go for the Draco Meteor into the Golden Go, perhaps just wanting to try to put it within a certain chip range, as we know that the Golden Go is locked into its choice specs. Does deal really respectable amount of damage, but as we return, we're going to be seeing the Kauto Cleave actually pick up the KO on it. Yeah, do you know that did a lot more damage to that Thunderbolt than I was expecting into the Salamence. It yeah. does just show the benefit of choice specs, boosting up that special attack stat by 50%. Meow Skorada is going to jump into the fray though, and I really like this Pokemon choice in here. Mm -hmm. um, you can obviously go for something like a low kick into that opposing King Gambit. And because we know the Terra has been used on Miguel's side of the field, it is going to be dealing massive, super effective damage to that Dark and Steel type. Yeah, exactly that. And I think being able to have that speed control, speed advantage, should I say, from the Meow Skorada is really, really nice here. You know that if there's going to be any sort of such punches coming mm -hmm. out from King Gambit's side, at least you're going to be able to resist it. But of course, we want, uh, if, of course, you're Marco, you want to be able to go ahead and just utilize it and even try to get some redirection going from this Volcarona. I'm not sure exactly what it is mm. trying to do here, whether it's worth just it staying in on the field or even maybe trying to preserve it for a later time. I think the Rage Powder would be good here. I mean, the Sucker Punch from the opposing King Gambit is still something you have to worry about, particularly if you've got low HP on that Volcarona. So going for non-attacking moves means our Sucker Punch will fail. So it could be a nice strategy as well as not allowing Sucker Punch to work, but also providing protection from Meow Skorada. But you first have to contend with the confusion and Volcarona oh, will hit itself. No. It doesn't knock itself out, however, only does six HP. But I think the critical thing here is you haven't been able to go for that redirection. You can see Amoongus um, taking barely any damage there. Meow Skorada, however, can't can't say the same thing from the King Gambit. No, I really can't. I think uh, low kick into that slot made a lot of sense, but mm. I think Miguel was a bit aware of that. Hence, mm -hmm. why did we did actually see the steel type Salamence switch out for the Amoongus. Better actually positions this Amoongus now to actually put some pressure on. There's the rain up, so overheat from the Volterona, if it does ever move, uh, will actually not deal as much damage as it would like. I mean, I think the low kick into the King Gambit is probably you know, the obvious play there. So Miguel thinking, you know, I, I could switch out my Amoongus here, um, but Marco thinking, you know, Amoongus is going to come into the King Gambit slot. I'm going to target the other one instead because particularly running that Salt Vest, we know the King Gambit can't protect. Yep. So if the Meowth Karada had gone for the low kick into there, which looks like the obvious play, mm -hmm. um, and seeing the switch, then, you know, the trade-off wouldn't have been there. But a nice adjustment by Miguel reading into that and saying, actually, I'm going to switch the other slot for Amoongus. Bringing Salamence back in and critically re going for an Intimidate here, lowering the attack of that Meowth Karada so it's a little bit less of a threat. It is able to go for the low kick, oh. doesn't get the KO on that Salamence though, Intimidate really paying off here as Volcarona does snap out of confusion and goes with the overheat. It is going to go into that Salamence and finally get the KO against it. Yeah, I think um, uh, Marco just wanted to double uh, up into that slot just to make sure that he is trying to punish as much as he can. So being able to pick up the KO on Salamence there does mean Intimidate is no longer a factor on the field and Miguel is going to be down to his final two Pokemon. But uh, we're going to be actually seeing the Leaf Storm coming up from the Amoongus and picking up the KO on that very little HP's worth of Volcarona. It is down for the count, and now we're going to have a two versus two. It's not every day you see a Moonga switch onto the offensive, no. but we have seen a rise in it thanks to all the Water-type Pokemon that are out on the field um, and in the meta at the moment. King Gamma is going to come back onto the field for a third time in this game one. In fact, Scalibur is going to be the last remaining Pokemon on Marco's side of the field. Really great to see this Pokemon in here. Being able to go for those Ice-type moves into the opposing Amoongus means that Amoongus isn't going to be as safe on the field as it thought in front of a Meowth Garada. At the same time, Meowth Garada can go for that low kick into King Gambit. And when we're talking about speed, it's really all in Marco's favor right here now. Yeah, it really is. And I think the fact that Marco does still have Terra available to himself mm -hmm. does mean that he can actually have the defensive typing added to the back Scalibur if he so chooses to. In other words, the King Gambit will not be able to deal any sort of super effective steel type damage. But um, uh, I think you still want to be focusing down on that Amoongus. The question is, does Miguel protect that Amoongus mm. in anticipation of it? 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, the thing is, Amoongus, it doesn't have Protect, but it's one of those situations where instead of protecting it, you can protect your partner Pokemon with yep. a Rage Powder. So it can maybe try and draw those attacks and sacrifice itself in the face of Baxcalibur, but allow the King Gambit to try and get a move off. Here you can see the Steel Terra type of this Baxcalibur, allowing it, like you said, Costa, to not have to take those super effective um, Steel type moves. As Meow Scarlet connects its low kick, doesn't Ooh. pick up the KO, however, maybe not as heavy as it thinks King Gambit, possibly the, the chair part doesn't count in the weight calculation. <laughs> And you can see the Icicle Spear come out into that opposing Amoongus. It only hits twice, however, not able to get the KO against it. This could be the opportunity for Amoongus to go for something like a Spore, try and put it to sleep. As you can see Iron Head barely doing anything to Baxcalibur, but Amoongus instead going for the Pollen Puff into Miascarada to get the KO. All eyes are on Baxcalibur now. Yeah, really, really is. And you see how that Steel-type Terra does come out quite handy here and uh, kind of forces that not very effective damage to be coming out from a very powerful King Gambit, naturally, as a Pokemon. Mm. And I think in this situation, the fact that Amoongus does not have that uh, protect available to itself does mean that the Baxcalibur should always be focusing down on the slot but the question is at the moment will Kin Gambit actually be able to get a Kowtow cleave off maybe with a follow-up of Sucker Punch well, let's see. It's going to be the Rage Powder coming out from the Amoongus. Baxcalibur going for the Ice School Spear once again. You can see just one more would have been oh. able to pick up the KO against it. So, Amoongus is out of this game one, but now the King Gambit's in a position where it can go for some damage. I think the defensive capability, though, for having that terror typing mm. has allowed Marco just that extra defensive level. Oh. Low kick, however, will be able to get the KO against it. Um, you know, there's just the perfect move opportunity to go into it even if it stayed in slice and dragon typing that still would have hurt for sure um, and just amazing for Miguel to turn this around King Gambit really is coming through it really really is and I think you can actually see why the item is really important on Baxcalibur because mm -hmm. if that was a loaded dice item rather than a life orb it will have likely actually picked up the KO, maybe nearly mm. guaranteeing the four hit instead of, let's say, the two that we saw. It really puts it at a disadvantage um, in able to connect and get rid of a Pokemon such as Amoongus, which we already covered. I mean, you can see why a lot of players do run loaded dice on Baxcalibur yeah. because of those multiple turn attacks, you're increasing your chances to be able to, to obviously get more than, than two, yep. as we saw in that particular game. And I think that certainly did change that end game there for Marco, who's in a phenomenal position, but just allowing that Amoongus to survive and go for the Pollen Puff just make King Gambit a really difficult thing to deal with. Even if, um, you know, there wasn't necessarily a low kick on there necessarily, you might have been able to still, with the King Gambit, come through. Yep. So immediately, as soon as that Amoongus survived, it was just able to support Miguel in a perfect way. And you can see again why Amoongus is just such a disruptive Pokemon. Yep. Um, it's difficult to take down. It has so many utilities, things like Swore, Pollen Puff, Rage Powder for that redirection as well. It does just make it a great supporting Pokemon. Do you think that Marco can ever bring the Don Dozo Tatsugiri? I would say looking at this matchup, it's it's definitely possible in the sense, you know, I, I don't see a Murkrow. Um, when I look at the Amoongus, I don't see a Clear Smog or anything like that that would reset those boosts. I think the issue is that you don't need to mm. um, necessarily. I quite like the other Pokemon choices that came. It was just, I think, a little bit unfortunate towards the end, obviously, with Baxcalibur. Um, that said, I don't necessarily think Volcarona did too much in this match. Um, I know that you have that threat of something like an overheat, but the fact that when you look at Miguel's team, nine times out of 10, that Pelipper's coming to the match, which yep. means rain is gonna be in effect. There's no way to negate the weather on Marco's side. So Volcarona is never really gonna be able to go for those overheats. Struggle Bug doesn't really seem to do much when you look, there's a lot of physical attackers on here. Um, you're not gonna worry about Pelipper's damage necessarily. Um, and although I did like Golden Go in here, I possibly would like to see it switch out so mm. it could have come in at the back then and done some good damage. Yep. Um, so again, Dondozo Tatsugiri I think could be nice here. I think the key thing is gonna be with the Dondozo, making sure um, that you can deal good damage with something like the Order Up because Wave Crash going into Water Type Pokemon isn't necessarily gonna be the strongest. But out of the blocks, Golden Go and Volcarona once again for Marco, but a little change of pace on Miguel's side is gonna be that poor Mo and King Gambit. Yeah, and I think over on Miguel's side, you do actually have that fake out capability right now, but it's not exactly the best going into Volcarona, especially obviously because the Flame Body as well as the Rocky Helmet. Mm. Um, so may not be incentivized to actually use it. Goldango, of course, uh, not uh, prone to any sort of fake out at the moment. I think King Gambit just needs to be a bit cautious of that Volcarona's overheater if, for example, does want to try to go into it. Um, mm. But that will be up to Miguel whether Miguel's going to try to risk going for the fake out onto the Volcarona. That's the thing as well, Miguel, you know, potentially, we saw in the last game, switched out that King Gambit straight away yep. and brought in the Pelipper, but 
Instead, we're just going to see a terrestrialization on that golden go. It's going for its steel terror. Wouldn't be surprised to see it rain on the battlefield <laughs> in a different way with make it rain on that golden go. Pulmot is going to go for the fake out into oh. the Volcarona, but it oh does also no. get the burn onto that opposing Pulmot. That is critical because it breaks the focus sash now, leaving it more vulnerable going forward, as well as some Rocky Helmet damage to boot. So, of course, Miguel knew this going in with the Rocky Helmet alone. Focus sash would have been broken. Goldengo can follow up with that make it rain, and it is not going to be able to get the KO on that opposing Pulmot, but still does a significant significant chunk wow. to that opposing King Gambit, leaving it a little bit more vulnerable going forward. Yeah, I mean, that critical hit does add a tiny bit more damage there, which can end up uh, adding up, of course, and we're going to be seeing the Tau Tark lead going into the uh, Golden Go. And uh, I think in this scenario, mm -hmm. of course, Volcarona is just free to just go for spread damage, if I'm honest, or just mm -hmm. try to go for the overheat, because there's not much stopping it from this point unless we see a forced terror type of that the King Gambit, but if you're Miguel right now, you do have the option of switching out the Pulmont if for whatever reason you want to either preserve both for fake out pressure, maybe for a future revival blessing, as mm -hmm. we do know that it has natural cure. So the moment that it switches out, it will get rid of its status uh, mm -hmm. state at the moment. Yeah, Volcaron has, I think, got a decision to make here because you could go for the overheat straight down into that opposing um, King Gambit, like you've said, but there's always the risk that something like the Pelipper is going to switch in here. At the same time, that Pulmont. I think the interesting thing for Pulmot is, you know, no Pokemon have been KO'd at this point on Miguel's side of this field. Revival Blessing isn't a thing that you have to contend with. Yep. And I think this is nice from Miguel switching it out, maybe going, I could use Revival Blessing a little bit later on. So let's keep it in the back. Bring out Salamence is going to throw a Cheeky Intimidate down against two special attackers, so not really needed here necessarily. But nice to have Salamence on the field for that offensive pressure going forward. King Gambit is going to go for Sucker Punch, but the Steel Typing, you know, having dropped the Ghost Typing on Golden Go, will allow it to take all these Dark Type moves. And Overheat connects on King Gambit and gets the KO. So fantastic play here from Marco going straight on the offensive in game two. Yeah, and I mean, it's so far working out for him quite nicely. Uh, Make it rain is going to be single target, even though it is at minus special one of its attack. Um, it, it's going to... Wow, forget it. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that stage isn't a thing anymore uh, because that was a critical hit and that was a Oko at the moment, which is quite, quite substantial. Yeah, it certainly is. Getting a double knockout in that turn certainly does swing the momentum into Marco's favor. Yep. One thing you have to watch out, though, for is, of course, Pulmot's going to come back into the field. But this is the interesting thing. There's an Amoongus, there's a Pulmot. Taking a look at both of these Pokemon, they're really, you know, def defensive support type Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, even on the Pulmot, um, you know, is running close combat um, and running Nuzzle. He can do some paralysis things here, but Pokemon... When you consider that there are four Pokemon remaining on Marco's side of the field, close combat also drops your defenses. You're going to be extremely vulnerable to anything, particularly as, as you're on low HP. So actually, the defenses drop don't even matter. But there's no. a lot that can deal with that Amoongus. The issue is Revival Blessing, because yes. if you can get that up and bring a Pokemon in from the back, something like Salamence, obviously something like the King Gambit, then that can just give you that little bit more time in the game. Yeah, it really, really can. And there it is, Lou. You're going to be seeing Revival Blessing. Uh, <laughs> such a cool animation, but more importantly, <laughs> such an amazing move. Yes. Uh, being able to really really put out such good support in sort of the mid towards end game scenarios. We're still seeing that Miguel's trying to choose which Pokemon to revive, and it is going to be that Salamence as Volcarona goes for the overheat. Does, of course, pick up the KO onto that Pormod, which was already at a very low HP threshold. So it's going to be going down from any sort of move. And um, what's left to be used at the moment is that Make It Rain. Now at minus two special attack. Hoping, I think he's gonna oh, get a crit. Together. I was gonna say it, but I was too scared. And there it is. It's gonna be a critical hit. One hit KO onto this Amoon Guess. I think Marco is very happy with the training <laughs> that has undergone with his Golden Go. Hey, Golden Go's on the rampage right now, getting two critical hits when it matters. Stat drops, who cares about stat drops? <laughs> I can just get critical hits all day long. It's almost like it had a cheeky focus energy going on wow. there. But no, Salamence is gonna join the field. However, I don't think it's gonna be, it's gonna be a short lived journey here for Salamence. Uh, Golden go you know if you are marco here you can switch it out reset it but you might as well keep onto the field make it rain just try and do a little bit of damage here instead it is going to be the switch however mm. i guess you know considering the amount of damage that the golden go is capable of let's bring it in the ascarad is going to join the field as volcarona goes for the rage powder just drawing in all those attacks from salamence allowing the ascarad a safe avoid to onto the field yeah and it makes a lot of sense because uh, the golden go isn't directly threatened by either Dracon Media or Hurricane from this element, even if it, for whatever reason, does get a focus energy set up. It's not going to be doing that much, and I think Miguel, of course, is very well aware of this. He's going to have to really rein in his emotions as possible mm -hmm. right now, because at least from my point of view, I would be a bit frustrated with the double critical hits. I think that is such, such a out-of-your-control scenario mm -hmm. that honestly, I think, can turn the tide of a match. It is definitely frustrating. I guess the one respite you can have is Miguel was already on the back 
foot at that situation. Mm. It was a difficult position for him to be in. I think it's more that it adds insult to injury, yeah. more than anything else, to be able to get those critical hits. And both these players, you know, they're well versed in Pokemon. We saw Miguel's accolades there going dip back to 20. 12, you know, it was over, over 10 years ago yeah. there. Um, so I think, you know, being able to come back from the situation, although difficult, particularly at this stage in a competition, you know, this is only round three and there are six more rounds to go after this. I believe we are in nine rounds. Yep. Um, that, you know, you are going to be able to adapt through this and try and push through and try and make sure that you have that undefeated run going forward towards the latter side of the day. Um, but on the opposing side, you have Marco, who is just as well versed in this as well. So I think both players have had enough experience with the RNG factors of the game, yeah. you know, that luck and the way it can roll. Um, so hopefully he won't be too tilted going into this game three. And focusing on game three, I mean, we've seen on Marco's side of the field that Golden Go and the Volcarona being led out both times. Yep. Now, my question is always, do you go with that tried and tested winning combination mm. or... You know, can you maybe shake it up a little bit here? Go for something a little rogue? I, I guess it kind of makes sense as a best sort of lead going into Miguel's team. Seeing that we saw Miguel bring both the King Gambit as well as the Puma at some point, mm -hmm. uh, being able to just deal that high burst damage straight away, have the potential yeah. at least either the Golden Go or even that overheat from the Volcarona just it honestly sits quite nicely going into Miguel's team. The mm -hmm. only thing obviously you need to be aware of is that rain mode that we saw that Miguel did bring game one. It did actually work out quite nicely for him, but that Thunderbolt being available on the Golden mm -hmm. Go is something that honestly with the choice specs is something that he really has to take, be aware of and uh, sort of like try to better position mm -hmm. his board state against. It's the steel terror type as well on the Golden Go that is so annoying for Miguel to deal with yeah. because King Gambit otherwise has a great time. It does, you know, yeah, Captain yeah. Cleave or even the Sucker Punch utilizing the ghost typing uh, that Golden Go naturally has allows it to deal with it so well and you can see the leads coming out again from Marco exactly the same and the same as game two for Miguel here you know going for that King Gambit and Puma once again yeah and I, I think it would have been interesting to see some form of rain coming out from Miguel's side but mm. in this situation we've got let's say fake out pressure but the King Gambit does want to try to uh, sort of pick up a two hit KO if it can onto the Golden Go but it just really has to be cautious about this Volcarona. Volcarona is putting on a lot of uh, pressure both offensively as well as support wise because uh, being able to have a sort of uh, dual type mode of let's say you've got the Volcarona or Golden Go that you can choose to go for the immediate burst damage is so so crucial and I think that's what Miguel's sort of having an issue with board state wise. Well, Palmer is going to go for the fake out into the opposing Volcarona here, of course, going to have to take the Rocky Helmet damage and get burned as well for its troubles, breaking that focus now straight out of the blocks here. Uh, Volcarona flinching, obviously not going to be able to go for anything here, but Golden Go able to go for that Shadow Ball. Oh. It is going to connect down into the Palmer and get the KO against it. No Revival Blessing will be able to be used in this Game 3. Yeah, and I think it's quite crucial to see which move the Golden Go is actually going to be locking into. So Shadow Ball there just means, mm, oh, just, just means vibes. that it wants to pick up the KO on Palmer. It wants to guarantee it and maybe in the back it could try to make sure that it switches out switches back in to be able to deal a lot of damage mm -hmm. but the fact that the king gambit dealt so much damage onto a non terror type golden go is so crucial and actually mm -hmm. does exhaust a bit of the resources available for this golden go to actually um, extend its longevity in this matchup due to the priority over on Miguel's side. Exactly, and this is the key thing. Golden Go actually survived that here. So the temptation to click Sucker Punch on this next turn for Miguel is so strong. However, that Golden Go could easily switch out. We know it's choice, so it would have to go for that Shadow Ball once again. So switching out will mean that obviously Sucker Punch fails and you keep Golden Go for later on, particularly as Volcarona is in prime position to go for something like an Overheat. That's why I love the adjustment here from Miguel bringing in the Pelipper. It sets the rain. King Gambit's obviously running the Assault Vest as well. This special type fire move from Volcarona is going to be hitting as hard as Marco would like. Yeah, exactly. And I think Pelipper now being on the field, of course, it does bring the rain. It does mean that in this situation, it could either go for the offensive, go for a bit of damage, or even try to go ahead and actually set things up. Maybe get a Tailwind going. You've got wide guard potential as well for support. Um, so in this scenario, uh, most likely the Golden Go may actually switch up, but I guess mm. it doesn't. <laughs> no, Rage Powder coming here as Golden Go is going to go for the Shadow Ball. And actually, I completely forgot about Rage Powder in the sense you can direct all those single target attacks on the opposing side for the 
King Gambit. And yep. I guess the switch out was just too high a risk for Miguel to take in this game three. Pelipper is going to go for the Hurricane, however, connecting down onto that opposing Volcarona. Oh. Not enough to get the KO against it. So King Gambit is also going to channel this Calton Cleave down into Volcarona that will get the KO. But I think critically was the damage that the Golden Go was able to deal out with that Shadow Ball. A great situation here for Marco. And now you have the utility to bring in a Pokemon from the back. Yeah, and I think something to make note of there is the fact that Flame Body did not activate mm -hmm. from, uh, of course, that damage uh, coming out from the King Gambit. So uh, in this scenario, yes, Marco does have a free switch in. I think the rain mode is quite nice here, but honestly, I think Miasturada positioned himself here. The fact that it's going to be outspeeding all of Miguel's Pokemon on his side of the field and the Pelipper looks like it may just be within Flower Trick range as well. Mm. Does mean there's a lot of pressure from Marco's side. And he's got the choice of switching out the Golden Go if he's going to expect King Gambit to try to go for a Sucker Punch, but it's just going to have to come down to what Miguel thinks is the best move for this turn. I would be so tempted to switch out that Golden Go at yeah. this point and just have it in for the end, possibly using Miascarada to try and target down the King Gambit. Um, you know, you can go for something like a low kick into it. It has taken, a, you know, a, a little bit of damage, I believe. Yes. So you might be able to get the KO against it. And that just means the Golden Go is much safer when it comes back in. The only issue, however, is if you then leave the... Pelipper untouched, it can go for a Tailwind. And you've just spoken so eloquently about the speed advantage that is on Marco's side of the field. And the Tailwind would certainly turn that on its head. Yeah, it really will. But we're going to be seeing Golden Go actually switch out right now. Does not want to try to risk that sort of bait or read coming out. And we're going to be seeing the Baxcalibur switching in. But Ooh. Pelipper switching out right now does mean that there's a potential chance that uh, the Miascarada may have gone into that slot. Mm. Not worked out quite nicely, but I think the Salamence being brought in does mean that the King Gambit should be surviving any sort of low kick, unless it goes for a Terrapin. That's really true. You know, nice to use the Intimidate to catch the Baxcalibur on the switch in as well. Miascarada is going to Terra-type into Grass Terror. It's going to give it an extra 50% boost to its grass type moves that it's going to have here something like a flower trick and gambit's going to go for the sucker punch but it will fail i believe going into what was the golden go back scalibur coming in here in its replacement instead gets in nice and safely um, except for the intimidate i suppose and flower trick is going to connect down on salamence barely does anything though salamence a great switch in here for miguel yeah i mean times full resistance there it's really <laughs> hard for even miascarada to deal a dent in and uh, i think king gambit is still in a good enough position it just wants to make sure that it could go ahead and actually um deal the damage that it needs to it's got the pressure from Sucker Punch mm -hmm. and the fact that Baxcalibur can no longer go for Terra type due to this Mouse Garada going does mean that it is being threatened by these Steel type moves, both from, uh, or I would say primarily from this King Gambit, since it's relatively free for it to go for it. The Salamence having the Intimidate onto the Mouse Garada does mean that Low Kick will not be um, de dealing as much damage as it would have liked. My eyes are on that Salamence, however, because Miguel has not used Terrestrialization in this game yet. Yep. And, you know, the Salamence is a Pokemon that we can see, you know, from the list is able to deal well with this opposing Meowskarada. You know, being able to go for that Hurricane in rain, 100% accurate, is going to be devastating. And then switching into this Steel type means it's not going to have to take this disruptive damage from something like the Ice type moves that the Baxcalibur is able to deal with. So this could really be the turn of the tide in this game. But Spalimar going for the Protect here doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage from something like this King Gambit low kick oh. as you can see is not enough to pick up the KO against it that Intimidate really paying through as Salamence goes for the Draco Media into that Protect however leaving the Miascarada untouched and unchallenged uh, King Gambit however is going to pick up the slack there and go for the Calton Cleave breaking the Focus Sash but not getting the KO yeah not getting the KO but of course we do need to be aware of the fact that um, this Miascarada does not have any priority moves from its mm. side, so it doesn't have Sucker Punch. Of course, that is due to the low kick being uh, preferred from Marco's side, which does mean that it is being threatened by the King Gambit. This sort of forces Marco to take into consideration whether he should protect his Miascarada in anticipation of that, or just try to go for the damage, try to go for the read, and if he can, actually pick up a KO on King Gambit. But then, like you said, Lou, mm. it's the fact that this Salamence is in a really good spot with the Draco Media, with the fact that it's gone for the Steel Terra type. It does mean Baxcalibur is not going to be dealing as much damage as it really would have liked or pick up a one-hit KO onto it, which it most easily mm. can due to that times four uh, Ice Week type. I was going to say, do you know what? I'd love to see the Miascarada switch out here for the Golden Go because Miascarada can come back in later, apply a lot of pressure with something like the Low Kick into that opposing Salamence now that it has gone into the Steel Terra type um, and maybe allow the Baxcalibur to try and deal with this opposing King Gambit. But first of all, Baxcalibur has Whoa. to take a Draco Media. It's not going to be able to survive a one-hit knockout. 
somehow kicks back Scalibur right back into his Pokeball. So Miascarada will rejoin the battlefield very shortly. Yeah, it's quite tough because you need to try to bank on the correct decision. And I think mm -hmm. the fact that Miguel thought, okay, I can safely go into the, the um, uh, back Scalibur slot because I can guarantee a KO. And if I don't guarantee a KO, at least I can deal enough damage to pick up, of course, that Golden Go, which was already on 7 HP if it were to switch out. But this is the thing, Miascarada's here on the field. It can go for something like the low kick into that opposing Salamence, and Golden Go can go for pretty much anything into Palafra at this point. You know, Thunderbolt would be a good one to go mm -hmm. into. Um, of course, it's going to be locked into that, but the key thing here is Marco's in a position where he could very easily get a double KO. Yes, then King Gamma's going to come back in, but it only really has those single target moves, and even if it does go for something like a Sucker Punch, it's going to have to contend with some big damage coming out from either Miascarada or the Golden Go. Yeah, and I think the fact that um, uh, we, of course, Miguel goes for the Protect there, wants to make sure that there's no li low kick going into that slot, which mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. I did want to make a point that we know that this Miascarada is not protein. If mm -hmm. it was protein, it had the potential of turning into that uh, fighting type, which yes. would have likely guaranteed the KO, because even right now that it is a super effective move, I don't think that Salamence is within KO range just yet. Mm. The issue as well is King Gamba's coming back in. It's, it's rocking its assault vest. It's not going to worry too much um, about these special type attacks coming out from the Golden Go. It has taken a huge amount of HP, though. That's something also to bear in mind. So really, anything coming out from the Ascarada going for something like the low kick into it will be able to get the KO. It is going to go for a protect, however. Maybe that HP is low enough for the Golden Go to get the KO against King Gambit. Oh, are we going to be seeing the punch. read? A sucker Punch fails. Draco Media, however, does mm. go into the Golden Go slot and does pick up a KO. Just having seven hit points remaining isn't going to do much for you there. And I think Marco's aware of the situation that he wants to try to play on Miguel's misplay. And Miguel mm -hmm. just knew that he had a couple of safe options. He did have the speed advantage over that Golden Go. So that means Salamence, and as long as it connects with the Draco <laughs> Media, it yeah. should be good. And I think that's what Marco was trying to bank on. The miss. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, having the speed advantage over the Golden Go as well, you know, does give Salamence the edge there in that matchup. So Miguel is going to be able to take this set two and one. And, you know, it certainly was a slog throughout that game three. But it shows that... King Gambit is one of these Pokemon that can be so disruptive, you're forced to deal with it. Yep. Particularly when you know it can't protect, you know it's going to be attacking. And the attacks that it has the capability of dealing out can be so disruptive. Taking a look at a lot of the Pokemon on Marco's side, a lot of super effective damage could come from that King Gambit. Yeah, exactly that. And I think um, Miguel being able to be aware of it, of course, is going to be uh, progressing on to round four with a 4-0 uh, mm -hmm. record, which is very, very powerful. This is definitely what you want to be doing. You, he seems to be on form. He seems to understand and have a really good depth of understanding of his uh, flow charts and mm -hmm. matchups in this. And I think being able to do this as well against Marco, who does uh, over the past couple mm -hmm. of years has been really on top of this game, is really, really powerful and does say a lot about his current form going into this. Exactly. And one other thing I want to really touch on with Miguel's team is we didn't see the Palafin come out. No. You know, we didn't see that no. as a team. And I think sometimes when you're looking in team preview or taking a look throughout the team list as well, yeah. you might see Palafin straight away and be like, right, that's the strategy. That's the core. Yeah. It's built around this. How do we activate, you know, the zero to hero ability and yep. then start sweeping with Palafin? But actually, Miguel was able to show the versatility of that team. Mm. And there's a lot of powerhouses in there as well. Yep. You know, making sure that you have Pokemon like Salamence, and I love seeing the Steel type on there, particularly when we're so used to seeing exactly <laughs> seeing Hydreigon being the Steel type dragon, going for that yeah. um, kind of role in a team. Salamence coming in, and I think having the Intimidate ability yeah. has been really, really nice. I know we sometimes see on Hydreigon, obviously Steel Terror, because then it's still got its Levitate, so it's not going to yeah. have to deal with any Ground type attacks. But I think a lot of Ground type Pokemon, although it's kind of an old age joke in video game that you have to have some kind of Ground resist ground on your resist, team, yep. because there's Ground type Pokemon everywhere, because of the amount of you know. Water-type Pokemon, there's the Ice-type Pokemon coming into prevalence mm -hmm. as well with Baxcalibur, and of course Grass-type Pokemon coming into effect, because again, yep. Terra types are a thing, Terra Blast is a thing. Ground types have almost just, they haven't fallen away, they're still very yep. present, Garchomp's still around but they haven't been as dominant as they have been previously. No, I mean, earlier on in the meta, they definitely were. And I think as people started having more checks to them and mm -hmm. sort of better understanding certain matchups, or let's say, for example, the Don Dozo Tatsugiris started coming out yes. as well, <laughs> kind of uh, scaring the dragons away, mm -hmm. per se. Um, so I, I think being able to sort of see this escalation and sort of the minimization of the... Uh, those sort of dragon type moves, mm -hmm. or at least the Hydreigon, uh, I, I think is really, really crucial. I'm, I'm kind of sad that we haven't even seen a Hydreigon <laughs> so far yet. Uh, I'm quite surprised, if I'm honest. 
well, you know, it's how, it's how the meta changes. And I think there was such a dominance in... Uh, people were saying double dragon with Garchomp and Hydreigon. Yeah. And now it's more like Dragonite and Salamence. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it does still show that Dragon is a very dominant, you know, type in the format at the minute. And I think the nice thing about it is that you can go for that terrestrialization and change your type yep. in an unfortunate matchup. And again, it just shows how good that is from what we've seen with the Salamence. So huge congratulations to Miguel there. Yeah, exactly. So what we will be doing is we are going to be cutting for a very short break so we could get the winner of the uh, top cut of 3B there on mm -hmm. so we can actually have a discussion, see their thoughts as well. So don't go anywhere and we'll be back with the interview. We are here live uh, with the winner's interview. Of course, we've got Miguel uh, and Miguel, what a match, especially against a very, very strong player as well. Oh ah. my God, Marco Fierro is uh, a really good player. Yeah, uh, he has a lot of level. Yep. He is one of the best in Italy. Mm. So um, we we have we played like two years ago mm -hmm. uh, in Malmo. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and it was pretty intense too. Yeah. So here was like the revenge. <laughs> <laughs> it's and sort it of like, like the, oh the my payback storyline. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that is great. And I mean, what an incredible way for you to do it as well. You have a very, very interesting team. I, I think we were talking about with Lou as well, where we're like, oh, oh Palafin. You know, like Palafin could really be strong. Generally speaking, it's a great Pokemon, but no Palafin. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no need no, for Palafin. Not in this right? matchup. Not in this matchup because um, uh, with Volcarona, uh, Volcarona Corona had a uh, Terra Water. Yes. So with Terra Water, uh, he completely denied the, mm. the um, kind uh, of Palafin. walled the Palafin. Yeah. yeah. So it was pretty tricky to play with him. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I was pretty. Um, I had to play with uh, Salamence, mm -hmm. uh, Pelipper, uh, King Gambit, uh, King Gambit, and Pau Mod was pretty good, yeah. but um, Among Us too. So it was like mm. Mm, I have to read the the lead. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the the, the, the game um, mm -hmm. I think was in the first turn uh, yeah. with Goldengo. Yes, he had to uh, Terra Steel mm -hmm. or not to do it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Power Mode was pretty good because mm -hmm. he uh, has a close combat. Yeah. So if he Terra Steel with the Steel, yeah, uh, can pressure this this is lot. Yeah, exactly. And I think we saw in game two and game three, you opted for the fake out each time. Yeah. Even if <laughs> both times you got uh, burned from the flame body. But yeah. <laughs> of course, you do have natural cure if you want to switch it out. So it yeah. can sort of balance that situation, get rid of the status. Um, but you really did focus down on it. You wanted to make sure that you're always stopping that Volcarona from that turn one. Yeah. Is, is that sort of understanding of Golden Go's scenario and position where it's just going to go for the burst damage? But you want to scout out to see which move it locks itself into, right, with the choice specs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because of the choice specs, mm. I was like, okay, I have to play around yeah. the the um, uh, maybe Thunderbolt, so I have yep. to take care with Pelipper mm -hmm. or play around Make It Rain. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, um, the um, uh, I don't know how to say in, in English, um, Cuerpo Llama, the Volcarona ability. Oh, uh, uh, Struggle Bug, or oh, Rage, or oh, the ability, Flame yeah, Body. Flame Body. Flame that Body, that yes, 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 yes. Uh, flame Body was um, not a problem, mm -hmm. because Power Mode uh, survived, survived anyway. Yeah. Uh, the Make It Rain, yep. um, even without the, the Terra Steel. Yeah. So it was like, okay, um, I just have to uh, put some damage on mm -hmm. the Goldengo, mm -hmm. and then just play around with the uh, Salamence, uh, yep. which was uh, with the Terra um, Steel 2, yep. was a uh, Winken with King Gambit mm -hmm. to play against uh, Baxcalibur, Mascarada. Yep. Anyway, I was pretty pretty uh, lucky in the first game. Mm -hmm. I was sorry about it. Well, yeah, I mean, that yeah. was a two <laughs> back to back critical hits, yeah. right? Like, that was <laughs> yeah. a lot of damage. And <laughs> the second one, uh, that was bad for me, mm -hmm. but that's Pokemon, so that's what we are playing yep. to. <laughs> you get some, you give some. I mean, that's just naturally the flow of the game, right? Yeah. And I, th I think we saw the uh, King Gambit we're talking about as well, where it was a very crucial piece to your strategy. Yeah. And um, in combination with the Salamence, especially with the Steel Terra typing, it put a lot of pressure on Marco's Pokemon to the point where you had the speed advantage, you had the priority advantage. You just needed to make sure you target down the correct slots at the correct times. Yeah. Um, anyway, Meowskarada was... Um a huge problem because mm -hmm. uh, he has um, low kick too. Yes. To deal with King Gambit yep. and with Terra Steel uh, Salamence, mm. and it was it, it was like, okay, I have to um, preserve really really good the mm -hmm. the um, Terra Style mm -hmm. um, because uh, at the start of the game it mm -hmm. was a uh, good option to Terra Style uh, King Gambit too. Yep. But um, 
Salamence without the steel was uh, uh, just lost because um, Golden goes here too. So yeah. I had to play against um, uh, Salamence. Oh, mm -hmm. against Goldengo with Salamence steel mm -hmm. every time. And uh, every turn was like, okay, he's, is he going to go, to go with low kick or yeah. not? Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. pretty tricky. It makes sense because that's why you sort of preserved the Salamence maybe towards mid to end yeah. game because you didn't want to start off on a bad foot. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> let me try to make sure I get rid of Golden Go and then I could go about my business with Salamence, which really puts on the pressure. And it, it could tell. Like, we yeah. saw it 100% <laughs> of the time. I, I mean, so going into this tournament, how were you feeling? Did you feel really confident with this team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have been uh, testing it in mm -hmm. a stream. Like, okay, mm -hmm. it's going to be with uh, open team shit, so I'm going Might to stream well. it with all my viewers. Uh, a lot of love <laughs> from here. <laughs> <laughs> eh, hola chavales, un saludito, giro mucho. Lovely. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> Marieta, un beso, que sé que me estás viendo. Nada, eso. Yes. Um, the, the thing was, um, I have been testing a lot the, the team, so I, I was like, okay, it's um, a known team, mm -hmm. because JOD and Gaby Michaels yes. and a lot of people in San Diego use it too. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just uh, perform the team the best I can, mm -hmm. and then just uh, change uh, some details yeah. that I... Yeah, a couple of variants yeah, to try yeah, to yeah, see yeah. Like what, what I like work. the most. And, for example, the Salamence, the Focus Energy Salamence. Oh, my Because God, of Don Dosso. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, mean, I mean, honestly. Which is a problem. I, I was looking at it, and I saw the the sort of, like, moves and all that. I see Focus Energy, Scarf Lens, and I'm thinking, wait a second, is that a Hydreigon? It's like, no, no, <laughs> yeah. it's a Salamence. It's, it's a like, fake Hydreigon. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And, I mean, we weren't, unfortunately, able to see the Focus Energy, but we saw the uh, speed advantage as well as the offensive pressure that you were able to put on with the Salamence. Is that a sort of reason why you opted for, let's say, Salamence? Elements with the intimidate as yeah. opposed to hydragon. Uh, I, I thought in um, using about using hydragon, mm -hmm. about using uh, dragonite too, which Ooh, is a yes. good option. But mm -hmm. the intimidate uh, plus the uh, speed control mm -hmm. works pretty well, and yeah. it has uh, Draco Meteor mm. and uh, Hurricane. Synergizes and really well with yeah, rain, yeah, right? yeah. It's yeah. pretty good. Mm. So it was like okay, um, it's a little bit more fragile. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's. Uh, it's less, less bulky, let's say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, in comparison. Um, but it works pretty pretty good with the, with the rest of the team. 100%. I mean, we definitely saw it. We're wishing you the best. I was going to ask you if you've got any shout-outs, but it sounded like you had a lot of shout-outs that you already <laughs> did. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about it. <laughs> Not a problem. chicos. <laughs> in English. There's a lot of people from Spain seeing it. So. Si. <laughs> <laughs> Un abrazo fuerte. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. So what we're going to do is, first of all, congratulations. Thank we you very much. You the Good best stuff. for the continuation of this tournament. Hopefully, we'll be able to run into you once again on this desk. Who knows? <laughs> um, but with let's that, hope. let's hope indeed. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and cut to a very short break, and we will be back with the next round. So don't go anywhere, and catch you in a bit. All see you guys. <laughs> 